If you've just bought your Insta360 ONE RS, in this video, I'm gonna talk you through how to set it up with the 360 mod and the 4K booster mod. And later in the video, I'll see you back here and I'll talk you through how to shoot and reframe your first 360 video. And a quick shout out to Bushman Panoramic, who are the sponsors of this video, and I'll be using their selfie stick when you see me back here. So let's get straight to it. The camera comes in the box disassembled, so the first thing that you need to do is remove all the bits from the box and place them on a flat surface. Remove all the plastic stickers and wrapping from the lenses and from the camera. With the twin edition, the main components of the camera are the camera core, which is the screen and the brain of the camera, and then you have the 4K booster mod lens and the 360 lens and the battery and you have the mounting bracket which holds everything tightly together and enables you to mount the camera to tripods and selfie sticks. So the first thing we're going to do is configure the camera with the 360 lens. Take the main camera core in one hand with the red record button facing upwards and the 360 lens mod in the other hand with these square cutouts facing down. You then simply push them together until there's no gap between them. Now with your fingers and thumb, hold the ends of the camera in one hand and the battery in the other. The gold sticking out battery terminals need to line up with the gold terminals here on the camera core. Now line the battery up and keep hold of the camera ends with one hand and gently squeeze the battery and the camera body together with the other hand. And you have to make sure that no yellow shows here on the battery release clip and this will indicate that the battery is securely fixed in place. This 360 lens is really vulnerable and very easily damaged. So whenever you put the camera down without the lens cover, always put the base flat to the surface. So now place the camera down carefully and now you need to be patient because you need to charge the battery next. On the side of the camera here is the USB door. So pull this catch with your finger now and then pop the door off and it just hangs in place. This is a USB-C socket and this is where you'll need to plug in the USB-C cable that came with the camera. So plug it in here and plug the other end into an iPhone plug or a USB breakout charger of any sort. Once the camera is charged, disconnect the cable from the camera, but don't put the door back on yet because this is where you need to put in your memory card. To insert the card, have the top of the card facing upwards and hold the end without the gold connectors. Hold the camera so the One RS logo is facing up and now insert the card into the slot here and you need to push with your nail until it gently clicks in place. Now in order to put the door back on, we need to line these two dots up at a slight angle and put this end in first. Push on the door and it will click into place. And make sure there is no yellow showing because if there's any yellow showing then it indicates that the door isn't closed properly and the unit will not be watertight. So now you're ready to put the camera in the mounting bracket. Open up the mounting bracket by squeezing the red buttons either side at the bottom and the door will spring open. Now face the bracket towards you so you can see the RS logo. Hold the camera above and below with fingers and thumb like this, with the lens on the right and then slide the camera in. Now push the door closed and give it an extra squeeze to ensure that these tabs come right out. Attach the screw thread with the longer end away from the door on the bracket. I won't be talking much about the app until later in the video, but I do have to mention it here because you need to update the firmware of your camera before you can use it. Open the app up and turn on your camera by pressing this button here. To connect to your camera, press this icon here on the app and the RS camera should appear here, but if you have more than one Insta360 camera, you may have to select connect to a different camera here. And it will say that the first connection needs to be confirmed on the camera. So look on the back of the camera screen and then press confirm. If the camera's firmware needs updating, then it will prompt you here on the app and it will talk you through the process. And once you've followed all the steps and the firmware has been updated, you can then close the app. When you're not using your camera to shoot, then keep the lens protector on. This keeps the dust off and stops the lens getting knocked. And once the lens protector is in place, you can then put the camera down like this. Never leave the camera standing on the tripod mount adapter or face down on the lens without the lens protector on. Before you start shooting, I want you to familiarize yourself with the menu on the camera, so I'm gonna talk through that next. So turn the camera on here with the button on the top. Swipe down from the top of the screen, and this is where you can change a lot of the camera settings, format the memory card, and lots more. This icon reduces the brightness of the screen. This icon turns the LED record light on or off. This is important if you're filming at night or if you're filming near a window 
or your light will be reflected or bounced off any other reflective surfaces. This icon temporarily locks the screen so you can't accidentally press any buttons. This icon here is screen rotation so that the LCD screen rotates automatically when you rotate the camera. When you see two dots like this at the top, this indicates that there's another page on the menu, so swipe left to view the next page. This icon is voice activation and when this is selected you can say commands like start recording and the camera will start recording. This icon is quick capture and when selected you can press record when your camera is off and your camera will turn itself on and then start recording straight away. And this cog icon is a big camera settings menu. Within this menu we have general at the top but we'll come back to that in a minute. So on this first page you can search for your Bluetooth remote turn Wi-Fi settings on or off, or connect to your AirPods. You can also change how quickly your screen turns off when it's not being used. You can look at the voice commands that you can use for voice control, and you can format your SD card, which wipes the memory card so you can start using it. You can also change the audio mode and put on the wind filter if you're filming in windy conditions. And also look at the camera information so you know what version of your camera firmware you're using. So before I show you the other general menu settings, there are two things that I want you to change here in this menu. The first thing is to format your memory card, and this is so that you can erase everything on it and start recording. So select SD card, and then select format SD card, and then select confirm. And if you ever do this by mistake, you can simply select cancel here. The other item that I suggest that you change here is screen auto sleep and this changes the amount of time it takes for the screen to switch off if you're not using it. I change this to three minutes because anything less than this, it will just be annoying and it will feel like you're constantly having to wake up the screen. In order to wake up the screen though, you simply quick press the on button once. And to get out of this menu, select the arrow icon in the top left. So moving on to the general menu, so swipe down to get back to the top of the menu and then select general. In this menu here, you can select what mode the USB socket is in, so webcam mode, quick reader, etc. You can turn the prompt sounds of the camera off. You can turn Bluetooth wake up on, and this means that when your camera is completely off, it can be woken up via Bluetooth. You can also set the auto power off time, so if your camera isn't being used for a certain number of minutes, then the camera will switch off, and I would change this to five or 15 minutes. And again, to go back, select the arrow icon at the top. You can change the sharpness of your images, and for now, I'll just leave this on high. Set the anti-flicker to auto. This will prevent screens and lights flickering. And change the language used in the menu here. You can also reset the beginner's guide notices here. So these are the little pop-up dialogues that give you tips on each feature. The gyro calibration, this is to reset the gyro in the camera to prevent any drifting in your images and to ensure optimum stabilization. And the final option here is a factory reset and this will reset everything and take the camera back to all the settings it had when you first opened it. So now go back to the main camera screen by selecting the back arrow and then swiping up from the small line. On this screen, the menu graphics do turn off every 30 seconds and this is different to the screen sleeping. And you can't change this unfortunately, but to bring the screen back to life, you simply tap the screen. At the top left of the screen, this shows how many minutes you have left on your memory card. And the icon in the top right is how much battery is remaining. And at the bottom, this is the recording mode you're shooting in and the resolution and frame rate. So in this video mode, 5.7K, which is 360 mode, and it's 30 frames per second. And to quickly change between shooting modes, you can swipe left or right on the middle of the screen and the options just go round in a carousel fashion. So you have video, and you also have HDR video. HDR video is high dynamic range video and this will capture more details in the highlights and the shadows, but you will need a tripod if you're using HDR because otherwise your images may be blurry. Time-lapse mode, so this is for capturing time changing over a longer period, so the movement of traffic or a cloudy sky for example. Time shift mode, this can be used for walking shots for example, where you can speed up and slow down your shots. And at the same time, you can shoot in 360 and change the direction you're looking in. Bullet time mode, this is to be selected when you're using the bullet time handle or the bullet time cord for those slow motion circular effect shots. Loop recording, select this to record on a loop so you're re-recording the same file over and over again. And this is great for using your camera as a dash cam for example. 
burst mode, this will shoot a burst of several photos at one push of the shutter button. And star lapse, use this mode at night to shoot a time lapse video shot of the stars at night. And night mode, this is a low light photo mode. Interval mode, this will take several photos at intervals every so many minutes but will not automatically create a video with them. An HDR photo, this will help you to capture photos where there are lots of highlights and shadows and you want to capture the detail in all areas of your image. If you swipe left from the right hand side of the LCD screen, this will allow you to switch from auto mode to manual mode where you can make specific changes to shutter and ISO settings. But for now, we'll just stick with auto settings. Okay, so now let's shoot our first 360 video. First, swipe on the middle of the screen and tap to select video. Tap where it says 5.7K and we'll leave this set to 30. So 360 camera shoots a 360 degree image using two lenses and shooting one file per lens. And it creates one image by stitching those two files together. And this area around the camera here, all the way around the camera, is known as the stitch line, as this is where the two images are stitched. And this is why you should never hold a camera like this because you end up with distorted hands and poorly stitched images. And this is the reason we need a selfie stick, so we can get the camera away from our hands and away from our body. I'm using the Bushman Panoramic selfie stick, which is part of their monopod system. Bushman's products are really well engineered and I've used them now for more than three years. And what makes this selfie stick particularly good is that it's really long, so you can get the camera high up above you or right out in front of you. And this helps improve the stitching and reduces distortion, and it makes the camera look like it's floating in front of us or high above us. And if you wanted to mount it on a tripod, Bushman's monopod also includes a counterweight which makes it extra stable. And the height of the monopod also extends to head height. They also have magnetic car mounts, mini clamps and other accessories, so check out the link in the description below. For this shot, I'm going to use the Bushman extended to around 3 feet at a 45 degree angle out in front of us. And it's really important that when you mount your camera on the selfie stick that it stays straight so that the selfie stick remains invisible in your shot. So set the selfie stick length, press record and hold the selfie stick in your hand at a 45 degree angle and then just walk in a straight line for 30 seconds and then stop recording. And that's it, you've just shot your first 360 video. But before we reframe it in the app, I'll show you how to play it back on the camera. So on the camera, you swipe up from the bottom of the screen and then the play icon of your previously shot clip will show in the middle of the screen. Tap play and your clip will play. And to see other clips that you have shot, select the multi-square icon in the top left-hand side of the screen. And this will bring up thumbnails for all of the clips you've previously shot. And to play back other files that you've shot, you can simply swipe through them by tapping the screen and swiping across with your finger. So now open the app back up and I'll talk you through how to reframe your shot. So leave the camera on, open the app up and connect it to the camera like you did before by pressing the camera icon here. Once connected, select Album and then select the clip you've just shot which will appear here at the top. Tap the clip to open it and tap the screen to pause the clip. Now you can start editing this clip via Wi-Fi and leave your camera on and you don't have to download it. But I personally prefer to download the clip because it means I can turn the camera off and it saves camera battery. So slide along the icons here at the bottom and the last one on the right is the download icon. So select that and the clip will download to the app. So first of all, you need to change your frame size here. So I'm showing this on YouTube, so the frame size will be 16 nines. So tap here to choose your frame size. Now you need to trim the clip, so let's make it roughly 15, 20 seconds long. Select the trim icon and then drag the left line in to where you want the clip to start and the right line in to where you want the clip to end. And then press the tick icon. You can look around the whole image by swiping around with your finger. So now find the direction where you want to start your shot. So we'll start by looking in front of us. And now press the plus icon. And this adds what's called a keyframe and tells the app that you want to look in a certain direction. You then choose how wide you want your shot to be. So for this video, select ultra wide. Now tap the screen again in the middle to play the video for around five to 10 seconds and then tap again to pause. Now swipe the shot around with your finger to look back at you walking and then press the add keyframe icon again. So remember every time we press add keyframe we're saying to the app we want the image to change. 
Tap the screen to play again for five seconds or so. And now let's come out to a tiny planet. So tap the plus icon to add a keyframe and then select tiny planet here. Pinch the screen to come out to a tiny planet shot. Tap the screen again to play to the end of the clip. Tap the plus icon again and select tiny planet to finish and hold that shot. Now slide your finger along your timeline here at the bottom and take it to the start of your clip and tap the screen to play it through. So you've now shot and reframed your first 360 video. You can now export your clip by selecting the yellow export icon here at the top. Select flat and then custom, increase the bitrate and the resolution to the maximum and now press export and it will save the video to your camera roll. Now I'm going to show you how to swap the lenses over so you can start using the 4K booster mod and I'm going to show you how to access some of the 4K booster mods features and settings. So remove the lens cap and open the quick release door. Now to stop you putting your fingers all over the lens you can put the lens cap back on and use it to pull the camera out of the mountain bracket like this. Leaving the lens cap on hold either end of the camera and now pull the catch across to release the battery. Now hold the camera with both hands like this and gently pull both hands apart to separate the lens and the core. Take the 4K booster mod in one hand and the core in the other. You can have the lens facing you to record yourself so you can see the lens and the screen or you can rotate it the other way and face it away from yourself and record the action around you. Now line the battery terminals up as we did before and clip the battery together. Slide the camera into the mountain bracket and close the door. And now turn the camera on. The way you access the menu and the features of this lens mod are the same, but there are a few different settings that I want to talk you through. So firstly, swipe down from the top of the screen and the new settings here are stabilization, which you can change between low, standard and high. And on the second page, you can turn on and off grid lines, which appear on the LCD screen to help you frame your shot. These are just a guide and they do not appear on your final video. Swipe in the middle of the screen and you'll find a few extra camera modes. You have 6K widescreen mode, which gives you a cinematic crop on your video. You have slow motion where you can record up to 200 frames per second and you have active HDR. And using this mode, you'll have stabilized footage while shooting your action shots. You can use it off of the tripod and you'll still retain all the detail in your shadows and the highlights. In photo mode, you now also have the option of recording at a maximum resolution of 48 megapixels. And you can change that setting by tapping here on the screen and swiping through the options. In video mode, you can change the resolution of your video from 1080 to 4K, as well as change the frame rate by selecting video and tapping here on the screen. Swipe across to change between 1080, 2.7K and 4K and switch your frame rate from the standard 30 frames to slow motion at 60 frames per second. You can also bring up a quick select menu by tapping on the screen near the Q icon here. This will take you quickly to your favorite camera setting. To save a new setting, set your camera to the mode that you want to use and now tap the quick menu and now select the double arrow icon, click confirm and your current shooting mode will then be saved to this preset. The other feature you can use with the 4K booster mod while recording is the zoom feature. So when you start recording, you can then tap near the magnifier symbol on the screen and then slide on the screen to zoom in and out on the action. So the 4K booster mod is a faster and simpler way to shoot with higher resolution and higher frame rate options and you can export it straight from the app without having to reframe. And if you want a faster and simpler way to edit your 360 videos, you'll want to watch this video next. My name's Rich, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.